All right, let's go. I first of all want to thank all my friends and relatives who thought of me during the holiday season and said I needed better shirts for appearing on this uh, Native News Update show. Uh, miigwech for the coffee cups, the t-shirts, the hats, and the shirts here over the holiday seasons here. Welcome to this edition of the Native News Update. I'm your host for today's edition, Paul Domain. Many of the stories and information here can be found at our website at www.indiancountrynews.com where your online membership helps support this television station. Here are some of the news updates for the day from the Associated Press and other Native news sources. The two top leaders of the Hopi tribe say they will resign December 31st in hopes of putting to rest what has been political chaos on the Northern Arizona Reservation. Hopi Vice Chairman Todd Honoyama Sr. announced earlier this month that he would resign if it would restore peace to the Hopi people. He said just before Christmas in an interview with the Associated Press that he will make good on the promise and leave the position. Chairman Ben Nuvamsa, who was sworn into office on March uh, 2007 after a special election, announced his resignation during a recent tribal council as well. The tribal council was scheduled to meet again on December 28th to consider whether to accept their resignations. If the resignations are accepted, it would leave a rare vacancy in the leadership post. The tribal leader's terms were set to end in December of 2009. The secretary would be the next in command, followed by the tribal treasurer, but neither would have the authority to, to preside over council meetings. A Fort Taunton man has been sentenced to near, nearly six months in prison for beating another man with a lamp. Milo Whitetail was charged with assault resulting in serious bodily injury for the March attack on his cousin Calvin Whiteman. Authority says white man required facial reconstructive surgery and lost vision in one eye. U.S. District Judge Ralph Erickson sentenced the 45-year-old Whitetail to five years and 11 months in prison. Whitetail was ordered to pay nearly $125,000 to Indian Health Services and $3,000 to white man. Whitetail pleaded uh, guilty last October. The son of a renewed Native American artist is hoping a set of handcrafted flutes that were stolen from him are returned soon. Tim Tate Nivaquaya awoke December 19th to find his home in Apache, Oklahoma, had been vandalized and five flutes he had placed in his vehicle gone. He says the stolen flutes include a distinctive white pine flute he and his wife made while on a trip to Florida. He valued his four missing flutes at $1,100 and one belonging to his brother Calvert at $1,000. The Navaquayas are two of the four sons of Doc Tate Navaquaya, a Comanche flutist who is considered one of the great Native American artists of his generation. He was named an Oklahoma treasure by the Governor's Arts Award in 1995 and passed away the following year. The University of South Dakota at Pierre will offer its master's degree in computer science at three tribal colleges next year. The State Board of Regents approved the delivery of the master's degree online to Sinta Galeska University, Oglala Lakota College, and Sisseton Wapiton College. USDA recently received a grant from the National Science Foundation to, to, to uh, develop a demonstration project aimed at increasing the number of American Indians employed in computing and information technology. The Unkachog Tribal Nation of Mastic, New York, is suing Suffolk County, saying a police blockade of entrances to its reservation was a case of harassment and racial discrimination. The nation filed suit during late December in U.S. District Court in Brooklyn. The day-long incident on December 6 stemmed from the tribe's practice of selling tobacco products without charging state tax. The suit alleges the action violated the constitutional rights of the Unkachog. Tribal lawyer Jim Simmermeyer says the police blockade was, quote, deliberately set up to harass tribal members, unquote, by stopping people entering and leaving the Puspatuck Reservation near Mastic, New York. Surveyors suspect there are ancient Native American burial mounds in the Marquette County village of Endeavor, Wisconsin. 
Village leaders considered several development proposals for the site, but federal law requires local tribes to first survey the area. Ho-Chunk surveyors used ground-penetrating radar and found outlines of four mounds so far. Wisconsin law prohibits the disturbance of mounds and other human burial sites. Tribal archaeologist Jay Toth says many of the site's mounds were destroyed by the early operators of a school that was run on the land in the early 1900s. Village President Kevin Boudry says board members and tribal officials will figure out what the next step is. The Yakama Nation has given each of its roughly 10,000 tribal members $2,000 to help cover costs during the holiday seasons, a one-time payment from casino profits that equates to about a $20 million infusion into the local economy. Tribal members asked for the money earlier during December at the tribe's general council meeting where tribal leaders are elected and major decisions made. Tribal leaders question the legality of handing out casino profits without a plan approved by the federal government, but some tribal officials thought it could be done since it was just a one-time payment rather than a monthly stipend check. The checks were sent out recently to every enrolled man, woman, and child in the tribe. The Smithsonian National Postal Museum and National Museum of the American Indian have collaborated to create a beautiful digital collection called the American Indian on Stamps, Profiles in Leadership, Accomplishment, and Cultural Celebration. It features 40 images of the approximately 70 stamps that the U.S. Postal Service has issued with Native Americans since 1875. One of the big, most intriguing aspects of this one-in-a-kind website is that it shows the American Indian presence on stamps for over a century alongside with actual objects that inspired their creation, said Kevin Gover, director of the National Museum of the American Indian. The collection can only be viewed at www.aragio.si.edu. December is always marked by nominations for the 51st Annual Grammy Awards, and this year the Academy has uh, even more to celebrate with the opening of the Grammy Museum in Los Angeles. For the first time, nominations were announced on primetime television as part of the Grammy Nominations Concert Live. The 51st Annual Grammy Awards will be held on Grammy Sunday, Sunday, that being February 8, 2009, at Staples Center in Los Angeles, California, and will again be broadcast live. While the existence of the Best Native Album category seemed to be in jeopardy a few years back, it's going strong this year with the following nominees. Come to Me, Great Mystery by producer Tom Wasinger, Songs from the Black Hills by Brian uh, Akipa Brian, a uh, flutist, and uh, Spo Mo Kin Nan by the Black Lodge Drum, a uh, living legend on the Pow Wow Highway. Another one on the Pow Wow Circuit, Red Rock by the Northern Cree Drum, and Faith Kevin Yazi, a CD with lush multi part vocal harmonies, soothing melodies, and the quiet energy of gourd and water drum music. That's all coming up at the 51st Annual Grammy Awards on February 8th. And that is the latest round of Indian Country News. Join us again tomorrow for another edition of the Native News Update. We want to thank our underwriters for helping us broadcast this edition of Native News Update and our digital mall partners, powwows.com and nativeview.com, broadcasting from Helena, Montana. Thank you and join us again soon.